Cap 2, Lecture 37, Infinite Sequences of Series, Taylor Series. So, in the previous lecture, uh, we realized that uh, some functions can be, uh, can have representations as uh, infinite series in the form of a power series, which is, uh, since the function has a variable x, the power series is in x. And that uh, has some uh, interval, which we call it the uh, interval of convergence, IC. And then we also realize that uh, on the interior of IC, interior means this, if I have any of these uh, intervals, the interior is in fact AB. Uh, so, on that interior, interior of that, uh, we can find the derivative of any degree. It, in fact, it means that this derivative, derivative, why is it this, way? this derivative uh, can go inside the summation. This derivative can go inside this uh, summation. Uh, that commutes with the summation, and uh, this happens for x inside, uh, for x, any x in the interior of that interval of convergence. <sighs> okay, so let's see what we can get out of this. First of all, uh, this function is defined like this. Uh, we, we can have this. Uh, power series can be like this. It doesn't have to be just xn, it can be cn, x minus some a. And we said that the center for this one, it is center at x equals a. So let's look at this uh, from some different perspectives. Uh, so let's look at this. So. Let's take this, and this also has some interval of convergence, and remember that interval of convergence, if it converges, if it is, in fact, it has an interval of convergence, which is not just one point, uh, then uh, that interval of convergence is centered at this. Uh, well, this A is not that A, but anyway. So, uh, let's see, let me erase this thing and look at this. So let's assume that a function fx has a power series expansion n0 to infinity of uh, cn x minus a to the power n. Um, and this uh, is on some interval of convergence. Uh, and let's assume that we, let's just take the interior of that interval of convergence, okay? So, let's find the first derivative and see what happens. First derivative of prime x, I said that this first derivative can be, uh, you can find the derivative of the, every term here one by one. That was the meaning of uh, derivative commuting with sigma. But there it always commutes with sigma if that is a finite sum. But that is an infinite sum. In fact, the derivative itself is a limit. This is also a limit. We are saying that these two limits somehow commute. You can take the, uh, either you can take the, this limit first, then the derivative, or you can uh, take the derivative first, then the limit. You see? Well, I, I don't want to go into that, but that is the a matter of commuting limits. Limits commuting with each other. But well, let's not get in, uh, too much into uh, detail. So this, let me write it more explicitly. It is C0, C1 x minus a, C2 x minus a squared. Let me just write a few of them. I know it's uh, just to go up to cn x minus a to the power n and so on. So what is c that is zero? 
The second one is simply C1. Then I have C2 times 1. 2 times x minus a. Then uh, C3 times 3 times x minus a. And uh, the other one goes on to C n times n x minus a and minus 1. So, what is f prime at a? But f prime at a will give me 0, 0, 0. It's all from 0 except this C1. So I found that f prime at a if, if I can write this fx as a power series about a, then f prime at a, that center, is in fact coefficient c1. Well, uh, let, 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 let's just write f, of f at a. Well, I should have found f at a first. f at a, just look at this. f at a is simply c0. So that first coefficient c0 is the value of the function at point a. Then c1 is the derivative of the function at point a. So let me write this here. Uh, if this happens, then f of a is c0, f prime of a is c1. Uh, let's find the second derivative. f, let me write 2x, this means derivative, if I put parenthesis, I could have written double prime and uh, prime prime, but uh, it's better to write this because in general we don't have so, you know, what happens? Well, I get 0 plus 0 plus 1. Uh, C2, 2 C2, uh, plus uh, uh, C3 times 2 times 3 times x minus a, uh, plus uh, da, 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 and close to Cn uh, times uh, n minus 1 times n times x minus a, n minus 2. So, if 2 at a, then is 2c2. Well, I can write this as 1 times 2 times c2, so it is 2 factorial times c2. Right? So I have found that if 2 at a is 2 factorial c2. Let's find C3. So let's find C3 and uh, then you can guess what the trend is, right? So let me find C3 here. Uh, I mean F3, C3, F3. In fact, I can find C2 from here. F2x is 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus. Uh, then here I have C3 times 2 times 3 plus c4 times something which has x minus a, then every one of them has x minus a, right? So what happens? Uh, f3 at a is simply c3 times 1 times 2 times 3. So I can say that f3 at a is uh, 3 factorial c3. <laughs> what do you think happens if I continue this way? What would be fn? Well, fn at x well, this becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, except I reach this point. And uh, as you see, the third derivative, for the third derivative, this is n minus 3. So what do you think what the nth derivative is? So everything else is 0 up to this point. So I have Cn, then I will get uh, n minus, uh, so this is n minus 3 here, I have n minus 2 here, and this is 3. Okay, so how do you, uh, what do you think will happen here? 
So I will get, in fact, uh, n minus uh, n minus one. That is, in fact, two. So I will simply have two, three, four, n minus two, n minus one, n, and that's it. That is n minus n, right? That is n minus n. So. What is it? So I have found that if n, in fact, let me write here, if the n derivative at a, so the n derivative at a and plus something, cn plus 1, uh, something, 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 x minus a, you see, uh, each one of them after this point, they have x minus a. So if n at a, derivative at a, is simply this, the rest are zero. So it's simply this, and what is this? This is n factorial times cn. So I have found this to be n factorial cn. And this continues. And this thing continues. Okay, now it's, it's interesting that uh, finding the derivative of simply this, this guy here, This x minus a to the power n, the nth derivative of this is n factorial. Let me show you this is interesting. That is how n factorial comes into this picture. n factorial comes into the picture naturally. It's not just writing down some n factors of funny n factorial in the formula. So yeah, that's the formula. No. n factorial comes into the picture naturally. So let me, but if I hope you have understood what happened here you know, when you find the derivative at any stage, uh, certain things become zero. So like if f3 you see 1, 2, 3, three of them are zero. So I started with so many, okay. but at each step, uh, one of these coefficients, there is nothing else, so that coefficient is uh, left alone, the derivative of a constant is zero. So at each stage, uh, that constant, the derivative of that constant is 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, and until I reach, for example, when the nth derivative, this is the only one which is constant, the rest of them have some x minus a. And when uh, I apply uh, this function to a, I will get simply this coefficient, the rest of them are 0. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens to x n. Uh, so let's uh, take x n. So let's say g x is this. And let's write it one times x n. Okay. Uh, then g of one x is what? One times n x n minus one. g two of x is 1 times n minus 1 n x n minus 2. g3 of x will be 1 times n minus 1 times n minus 2 n minus 1 n x n minus 3. So what do you think g n minus 1 x is? Uh, well, let's, uh, let's look at this. So this is n minus 3, so I should have x to the power n minus uh, n minus n minus 1 right and here I should have one time what is this n minus 2 2 is one less than this so it is n minus n minus 2 right and this continues up to n okay so by looking at the the process, I will, I should have something like this, the n minus first derivative of this function, xn is this. And uh, so let's uh, simplify this thing. This is in fact one times, this is two, right? Two times three times da, 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 up to n x. So the n minus first derivative still has an x. 
So what happens? The F and derivative is in fact greater than this, which is 1 times 2 and 3 times n. n times n. So if fx is xn, then it implies the nth derivative of this xn is a fixed number, and that is n factorial. And what happens to fn plus 1? It is 0. This also implies that the fn plus 1 of x is 0. Which also means if I have a polynomial of degree n, the n plus first derivative of that polynomial is 0. Okay, so let's uh, one, one, one. Just thinking about, okay, okay. So let me uh, yeah, that's what I could do now. So let's look at these uh, yeah, let's look at these things and uh, so what do I get from here? I will get that C0 is Fn. C1 is uh, in fact F. Uh, prime a over 1 factorial. This is also, uh, I can say that it is f a over 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1. So c2 is f2 at a 2 factorial. And c3 is f3 at a over 3 factorial. And dot 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 and the CN will be the N derivative at A over N factorial. Okay? So by using, uh, I will find derivatives N times, I found the coefficients here. Well, how do I do that? I mean, I assumed, I assumed that this function has. Uh, power series on some interval and I and that interval is has is centered at a that interval is centered at a so if these are the coefficients if these are the coefficients then this power series will look like this so let me uh, erase this thing and uh, write down the power series for you the power series will look like with these coefficients we also get that fx should look like this sigma n from 0 to infinity f the nth derivative at a divided by n factorial times x minus a to power n and this is on some on some uh, ic interval of convergence so it happens on some interval convergence. So which means that its domain is IC. Okay. So its domain is IC. That interval of convergence is in fact the domain of this function. So let me write it and then emphasize the IC. <sighs> okay, so this is called Taylor series. Now, as you see, in order to have Taylor series, this function should have derivatives of any order. And I will write down some functions with this property. Uh, now, if x is 0, it is also called Maclaurin series. So 
Okay, so. So, this guy here, Taylor series, if f x is 0, which means there is no a here, it's just x to the power n, and this will be 0. So, a McLaren series looks like this. Let me erase all of them because we will be dealing with those all the time. So, if f x is simply and what are special ingredients here? It has or some assumptions. First of all, it has derivatives at point A, and then this is Taylor series. Zero is important because so many functions have a nice value at zero, especially the functions that we deal with. So this will be fn at the zero over n factorial of x. Okay. Now both of them have IC, so domain here is the IC. Okay, so now there are certain things here that uh, we have to be careful. First of all, when we deal with this thing, we deal with an infinite series and we find IC for an infinite series. For a finite series, that IC can be what? For a finite power series. If that's called a power series, uh, the finite power series is a polynomial. And the polynomial, the domain for any polynomial is minus infinity to plus infinity. It can accept any number. Why the restriction here? Why is it restricted? Because we are adding infinitely many numbers. For a polynomial, you are adding just a finite number of numbers. And that is always a finite number. But for an infinite polynomial like this, uh, we are adding infinitely many numbers. And uh, that might be infinite. So, or let's say it's divergent, not, just not, not infinite, it might be just, you, you cannot uh, write anything for the limit. So, it doesn't exist. So, that's why uh, it becomes restricted to certain the part of the x-axis, not the whole x-axis. For a polynomial of finite degree, it is the whole x-axis that is the domain. Uh, okay, now, and also I emphasize, when I said that, I emphasize that this function should have derivatives of any order, say, and uh, the derivative should exist at point, the point that we are just uh, discussing. So maybe a function doesn't have derivative everywhere, but it has derivative at point A, then it's okay. So now what, what's happening? What uh, geometrically what is happening? Uh, so let me look at this. So this is called Taylor, but we also have Taylor alone. So the Taylor polynomial sometimes we call call it Tnx and sometimes Pnx. Uh, I'm not sure what the book is like. Yes, book is it here. Okay. Well, let's just use Tn, standing for Tn, T Taylor. So Taylor polynomial of degree n uh, will be just this summation of two point n. Oh, well, so Tnx will be, let me uh, so let me erase this thing, so Tnx 
will be will be sigma less star at zero let's use k not n of the n uh, f k at say a n factorial oh sorry k factorial here not n k factorial times x minus a to the power k so this stops at n now what is special about tn uh, and we know that this approximates the function fx this approximate the function fx and that's what I started with I said uh, we cannot find the exact value of e to the power x or sine x or cosine x what you can do is you can approximate the value and the, the one way to approximate the value is using a Taylor polynomial <laughs> now what do we have here what is special about this Taylor polynomial and why Taylor polynomial you say well we have a series Okay, so what calculator can find uh, limits like that? And in fact, what is limit? You think, well, uh, even the best computer program uh, finds the limit in what? A computer program is step by step. It goes step, 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 step. So you have to write a loop, for example. And a loop is finite. Come on, it is finite. You don't have infinite loop. So the infinite or limit is an amazing model to analyze many things, but when it comes to real life, what is infinite? So, we have to stop somewhere. We have to stop at some end. Now, what is special about this thing? Okay, we in fact proved that Tn at A, just look, Tn at A is F at A. That's what we did, in fact. The, uh, this, the value of this function, or this, this is not a function, it's a nice polynomial. That is what? That is C0, which was C0, right? Remember, this was then C0. Then T prime N at A is F prime N, right? T prime N at A, and then what was that? That was 1 factorial C1, right? Then T prime, uh, let's write 2. 2 at A is F at a and this goes on and on up to tn at a is fn at a but tn plus 1 at a is not necessarily not necessarily So it's not, it's not necessarily, well, this actually was not necessarily under this. I mean, it is not necessarily equal, not necessarily equal. So, it, this Taylor polynomial of the Vn approximates the function at A, its derivative at A, its second derivative at A, third derivative, fourth derivative, up to n derivative at A. A. Now, what are derivatives? What uh, if the function had two functions have the same derivative at some point? Uh, what happens? So let's just look at this. Uh, if they have the same value, if two functions have the same value at point A, function one, function two, uh, then uh, they go through this point. The graphs go through this point, right? How about this? If they have the same derivative at one point, what happens? If two functions, the graphs will be like what? So the graphs will be kind of tangent at this point, right? And because they have the same tangent. This is slope of tangent line. Slope of tangent line. So if two functions have the same value at a certain point, it means the graphs go through the same point at A, or one point say. Or they have the same value at A. If two functions have the same derivative at point A, then it means that they are both tangent to the same line, which is the line tangent to both of them at this point. What happens to the second uh, derivative? Second derivative is concavity. 
So second derivative is telling me that uh, at point A, if one of them is concave off, the other one is also concave off. Not just concave, they have the same tangent, they have the same value. The same value, the same tangent line, and the same concavity at point A. And as it continues, well, there is nothing else for uh, uh, this third derivative and so on. But you can guess that they're, they're, they are getting closer and closer and closer and closer to each other. But where? This happens around point A. This happens around point A. So this Tn, in fact, converges to Fx around point A. Okay? So, in fact, that is what happens. Uh, let me write this thing. Uh, We can say that's Taylor's theorem that this uh, function Tnx uh, goes to Fx about x equals a. Okay. It also means that if I ex expand this thing too far from both sides, then maybe it doesn't uh, it approaches, but it takes some time. To most often it also depends on interval of convergence. If the interval of convergence is large enough, then no. Otherwise, if the interval of convergence is not uh, too large, then yeah, it just you can just stick here. Now I will uh, I will uh, do some work on mathematical for you and show you what happens. But for the moment, that is what I'm talking about. So. Uh, so we are dealing with two things here. First of all is the interval of convergence. Two things. One, I see. Two, how many ends or how large the end should be. And it should be to give me to give me a good approximation. Okay. So how large n should be to give me a good approximation? And that is uh, these two things. In fact, this IC is uh, the, the domain, in fact. So IC gives you the domain. And this one gives you the error. The error, which is defined to be the difference of these two. So this is telling me how far should I go in this uh, Taylor series to get a nice approximation. A nice approximation, a good approximation means that some approximation is given to you, some value is given to you, and they say it should be less than, say, 10 to power negative 20. Uh, and uh, it should happen over every point here. So uh, this one is, in fact, finding the, the appropriate n. Now, sometimes that n might be so large, so you have to do some tricks to find a smaller end, uh, but we, 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 I will not go through those tricks in fact, because uh, as I said, the uh, Taylor series perhaps was, uh, it, it has amazing applications in uh, theoretical mathematics, in mathematical analysis and other places, but uh, I'm not sure if it is used uh, numerically, so in numerical analysis I'm not sure if they, they still use it or uh, to approximate uh, transcendental functions, uh, but anyway, it's good to know, at least theoretically, if it is, uh, it is a good tool to find, to approximate functions. Uh, okay, so, uh, well, let me think if there is anything else here. So let's uh, find Tn for some nice functions, okay? So this is the moment that we will find a nice Taylor order. And also we find IC for some of them. 
the C for some of them. Some tables. For example. Now, what is the first example? That is fx. e to the power x is the mother of all functions, I say. Uh, so, yeah, some students were asking me if it's mother of functions. Who is the father? And I said, yeah, functions are of functions. So, anyway. So, well, let's see if I can find a Taylor series for this one. Uh, you might say, did you prove that the Taylor series exists for this? Hmm? Well, I leave that to a much higher mathematics at least. So, but I can in fact prove it using this. Uh, it doesn't really need that much high level, whatever. So what do I need? I need derivatives of this of any order. So what is f prime? Ex, that's fantastic. F2 Ex, F3 Ex, and any derivative is Ex. Now, what do I get? This gives me that Fn at 0 is 1, or n 0, 1, 2, blah, blah, blah. What is 0? What is n 0? Let's define f0 to be the function itself. So this is like f0. This is like f0. So uh, f0 is in fact no derivative, right? It means no derivative. No derivative is just a function. That's good. That is good. So what was Taylor series? That's about 0. So the Taylor series starts at 0, goes to infinity. And it's about zero. Why is it about zero? Because I have the value of derivatives at zero. The value of derivative at other points, say one for example, that's e to the power one. So you get e to the power one, that's okay, but you have to calculate e to the power one. But e to the power zero is one. So you don't have to calculate, you know, e to uh, a to the power zero, uh, we'll find it, and uh, a is uh, zero. I mean, what? So, what do I get? I have 1 uh, over that is f prime, so I have f prime, or fn at 0 over n factorial x. And it should be x minus a, but what is a? a is 0. So, this is in fact a McLaurin series for this, not Taylor series. So, uh, that is 1. 1 over n factorial xn. Usually they write it like this. Uh, x is n0 to infinity. xn over n factorial. Okay, so we found a nice Taylor series or in fact McLaurin series. So if I say Taylor or McLaurin, uh, just forgive me, I used to say Taylor series, not McLaurin. So, uh, so 1 is in fact what Ex and McLaurin series for Ex, and that is n starting at 0 to infinity, xn, and factorial. So, what is it? It is uh, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x. So, what is a consequence of this? A consequence of this is e itself. So, what is e to the power 0? This is for any x. Oh, 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 first of all, let's find ic. Okay, let's find ic and then talk about e to uh, e at 0. So what is IC? In terms of convergence is, uh, uh, let's use a ratio test. Ratio test, again, as n goes to infinity. A n plus 1 over A n, uh, what is A n? This is A n. This is A n. So that is the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, uh, then I don't need any absolute value 
except for the x, uh, but anyway, so that's x n plus 1, n plus 1 factorial, x n, n factorial. So that is a uh, limit as n goes to infinity. The x and x n plus 1 will give me simply x. n factorial, this goes up here and this stays here, n minus n plus 1 factorial. So that's absolute value of x. The limit, what is this? This is n factorial times n plus 1, right? n plus 1 factorial is n factorial times n plus 1. So n factorial, n factorial cancel out. I have 1 over n plus 1, n goes to infinity. That is this times 0, 0. Well, 0 is less than 1. But what does this mean if that limit is 0? So what x satisfies this? Anything. Just look at this. Any x satisfies this. So I see for this one is in fact minus infinity and plus infinity. Okay. So that's amazing. This uh, Taylor uh, McLaurin series, uh, in fact, uh, converges for any x, any x, any x. But the problem is how many n's do I need? So how large n should be to approximate the value at say x equals 10 million? Well, uh, and I guess uh, I said that I will uh, do another lecture on Mathematica and uh, I will probably, if I <laughs> remember, uh, I will show that and let me, I will try that and see how many, uh, how big, uh, how many terms, let's say, that's what I'm saying. How many terms do I need here to approximate uh, e to the power 10 million? So if it's 10 million, 10 million, 10 million, so for what n the approximate value is, is good enough. Good enough. It depends on what enough means. Okay, so. So the IC for this term is everything. I C is negative infinity and plus infinity, don't worry about n points here. So let's choose x which is in the IC and let's choose 0, e to the power uh, 1. E to the power 1 is uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus blah, blah, blah. So it is 2 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial. So, that's e. So, e to the power 1 is sigma, 1 over n factorial, n from 0 to infinity, and remember, 0 factorial is 1, by assumption. So, that's why you get 1, 1. That's fantastic. And, in fact, this one, uh, say, converges very quickly. That, that's amazing. Why, why does it converge quickly? Because the denominator is factorial. The factorial gets large, too large. So, and you know, E is in fact two point something. And that point something comes from here. And one over say, a thousand factorial is basically zero. So, uh, so this one converges quickly to E. But for pi, remember, I had, I wrote you, uh, a series called pi, infinite series that gives you pi, and that wouldn't, that does not converge quickly. That's just nasty. But this amazing, this amazing thing converges quickly for uh, one x equals one. It does not for <laughs> x larger than one. So the points between zero and one are amazingly good here, but uh, beyond that, it's so, yeah, we still have time for the two more, and then I will continue in the next lecture. So the second function is sine x. Sine x, what do I need for sine x? I need the derivative. So fx 
is sine x if 1x is cosine x if 2x is minus sine x if 3x is minus cosine x then f 4x is sine x and it continues, it's amazing, it continues f5x, well, not amazing, we can see that when I reach sine x then the derivative they just repeat Uh, well, let's find the uh, Maclaurin series, in fact, or Taylor series about zero. So what it gives me is this: f zero is zero. If one at zero is one. If two at zero is uh, zero. If three at zero is negative one. If four at zero is zero. If five at zero is one. If six at zero is zero. If seven at zero is negative one. So what do you think happens? Okay. So F zero is zero, so I will get zero times X. Uh, oh, the noise. So that's the plus. Uh, F one is one, so one times x plus zero times x squared. What is this, the third one? Is this one minus one minus one over three factorial x three. Then plus zero x four plus plus. 1 over 5 factorial is plus x5 uh, plus 0 uh, minus 1 over 7 factorial x7. So what do, you, what do you see here? There's like a nice trend here. Uh, there is no x to power, uh, x to even power. All, all even powers 0, 0, 0. I just have odd powers. And odd powers are also alternating. So it's not the it is odd power, but it is alternating. So let me let me see if I can come up with uh, but alternating means there is a minus one to power n and minus one or something. So sine x is uh, the Taylor series will be let's write and starting at zero to infinity. Uh, what do I have here? I only have uh, Odd power. What is odd? Odd is 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. So I have x to the power 2n plus 1. This makes sense for me because n at 0 will give me x1, which is this. So, and the denominator is definitely 2n plus 1 factor. Right? It is the same as 3. three. 5, 5, 7, 7. So if I start at 0, I will get x1, 1 factorial, x3, 3 factorial, x5, 5 factorial. But then I have minus 1 to something. I need this to be plus 1 here. So I just need n. So that is in fact Taylor or McLaurin series for sine x. And you can uh, calculate the IC. IC for this one is also negative infinity, 2 plus to infinity, but I don't need that. And the same way you can write the cosine x, and I'm not going to find it for you, you can do it as an exercise, and uh, that is in fact giving minus 1 to power n. Here I have x 2n, 2n factorial. So the first one here is 1, 1 minus something plus something minus something plus something and so on. And the IC is also negative infinity and positive infinity. 
Okay, so what remains from this uh, chapter, in fact, is uh, the how large that n should be to give me a good approximate value, or let's say a reasonable approximate value, and then I will I, uh, also give uh, some kind of lecture on using a computer program like Mathematico or Wolf from Alpha to do this. Okay, so. Let me stop now and see you next time to finish this chapter.